Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and once again, we're going to check out Northgard. Specifically, we're going to look at the newest DLC clan to release, which is Kurnev, Clan of the Stoat. You can get that for about five bucks, like the other ones in the store. Anyway, so a stoat, and I had to look this up, because I have a ferret, and I'm like, is this a ferret, or what is this? It's kind of like a long-tailed weasel. It's kind of related to it. So I'm like immediately drawn to this clan because I love ferrets. I love weasels. I love I love that that breed of animal. Anyway, so Clan of the Stoat is reminiscent of Clan of the Lion in the sense that it's like a completely different way of playing. So if you didn't like Clan of the Lion, you may not like the way this one plays either. That being said, this particular DLC clan is a bit more flexible than Clan of the Lion. Lion was a bit more military-based, as you can see here, whereas this new one, the Kurnev, is a bit more... I guess, you know, you can do a lot more with it. It's a bit more flexible. So if you can see along the top here, it is fairly difficult to learn. So if you're new to Northgard, I would recommend just checking out the core game and like doing, say, the stag or maybe the goat in the beginning. And then again, as I was saying, the lion was first introduced and that was a completely different way of playing because it's like a completely new, uh, like a faction continent, whatever you want to call it. The stoat kind of builds off the lion, but is a bit more flexible. So now you've got these two DLC factions here that are part of their own separate group. So what does this stoat have to offer? Well, if we look on the right-hand side of the screen, starting bonuses. Building a fort on a zone turns it into a duchy. And we'll see more about that later. Specialized workers assigned inside a duchy zone consume fewer resources. So... We want to build forts, we want to make those areas duchy, and the reason why we want these duchies is because workers will consume fewer resources. That's great. Um, there's also a happiness factor there, and they do not count in the population limit, but they require a crown's income. So just to make sure that you're getting a nice crown's income, because you will be spending a lot of crowns in this game, sort of upkeeping this population that does not count towards your limit. Okay. There's also this buildings built inside a duchy zone costs no upkeep, but they give less production. So, you know, if, if you've got like a food generating building by itself, that's generating say 10 food or whatever, and then you put a duchy in there, you'll note that the production is going to go down, but that's not all in all a bad thing because there's a levy bonus that we'll see later on. There's also this. The fort has two different upgrades. Instead of feasts, the clan can collect levies from upgraded forts to gain bonuses based on its zone's buildings. So as I was just saying above, even though we're getting less production from a duchy zone, we're going to get these levies and we're going to get like really cool bonuses. Also, the clan can assign monks to Viking artifacts like runestones. That's not something that the lion was capable of doing. They're not a Norse faction. They're like, I don't know what they're northern or what, what kind of faction they are, but they're like nobles and lords. And typically you, you cannot interact with like the runes and all of that and get lore that way. Rather, they operate on faith. But with the clan of the Stoat, you can assign just a regular villager to like a, a, a rune a rune stone, they will turn into a monk and generate that for you. So that's really cool. So they're, again, more flexible, I think. There's some fame bonuses, feudal duties. Um, levies give better bonuses. You can build multiple similar military camps in the duchy zone with a defensive fort. And then at 500 fame, you can collect two levies at the same time. Relics. The kingdom has access to both basic Viking and kingdom relics. So like I was saying, the lion and the stoat are part of their own like special kingdom faction. Whereas, you know, the rest of them all up here are like Norse, Viking, that kind of thing. Clan special features. Um, Nomino is the lord of lords and he acts both like a, dom a domain lord and a warlord. And I'll explain that in a little bit. They have to get that goes hand in hand with the fort system. Uh, forts. Forts turn the zone they're built in into a duchy and allow you to recruit a lord. 
uh, dom domainial fort. Uh, they turn the lord into a domain lord, and you can assign to production buildings. So you can actually assign the lord, assign to that duchy to protect it. Now, typically in the lion, you would build these forts to protect the zone that they're in. But you can actually turn the lord into a domain lord, assign them to a production building in that region, in that zone, and collect an increased levy bonus. So that's kind of cool. It's more economical. There's also a defensive fort that you could upgrade to instead, and you can turn your lord into a warlord. Instead of turning your lord into a domain lord, which is economical, you could turn your lord into a warlord and make it a bit more military. Each military camp in the zone increased the associated max bonus by 2.5% and increased the corresponding bonus value when you gain military experience. And there's the domain lord there and then the warlord there. So what I'm going to do now is load up my uh, save that I've been working on so I can show you some of this in action. All right, so here we are in game. It's worth mentioning that the save file that I had ready for you guys didn't actually load properly. For whatever reason, every time I load it, I get a black screen. It's a really nasty bug. But luckily, Idly and I are playing a game right now, and I waited a bit, and Here's my current progress with this civilization. So what I'm going to do first is show you the unique faith technologies available to the stoat. Um, anything with this little stoat symbol over it is unique to that faction. So levies also benefit your allies at an efficiency of 50%. And I'll show you the effect of a levy in a moment. Just keep in mind, you can actually help your, your team. Instead of doing a feast... You can do levies, and levies allow you to buff their resource income and so on. Um, another one is here, inland protection. Lords can move freely inside your territory and its adjacent zones. Typically, the lords that you create at these forts here cannot move outside of their zone, but with that technology, you can. Your next fort evolution into a defensive fort is free. There's another unique one here. Sentries can enter enemy territory and receive a weapon upgrade. Like subjects, they don't consume resources until winter. And your first four sentries do not count in your warband. Kind of nice. And then down here, you've got landlords. Domin Dominial forts provide plus two livability to the duchy zone they're built in. Your next fort evolution into a dominial fort is free. And Decima, I guess. Monasteries and their evolutions collect 0.25 crowns from their specialized workers in their and their adjacent zones. So those are the unique abilities there for that particular clan. Another thing I want to show you is the levy. So I have created a fort and I've upgraded it to the domainial fort. You can upgrade it one of two ways. You can make it economic, this domainial one here, or you can do the um, other one. I don't remember the name of it, but it's more military based. With this one, it is pretty much, I, 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 I hired a lord, recruit a lord, and you assign it to a resource building in that zone. And over time, a bar will fill up depending on what you're collecting. So for example, this is food. I'm collecting food here from this fish. So I have a lord assigned to that fishery. And if I hover my mouse over this little bar, it says plus six food and 30% resource bonus, 30% max. Bonus reaches maximum in 90 days. So you also get nine fame from this bonus. Because the bar is filled up, I'm gonna click on the levy button. And you'll note, look on the top, it went from like negative three food to plus six food. And if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see ongoing levy effect, plus six food and plus 30% food resource bonus production. So what you could typically do is during the warmer months, um, collect, your, collect your resources, right? And then during the winter to offset the penalties, you can activate your levy and get a short temporary bonus there. There are some technologies in here to help, uh, like for example, I can enact one of these that give my friend, uh, my partners, extra resources as well. So that's, that's something to think about. You can actually levy some of these resources off to your friends at well at a, as well as at a 50% cost. One other thing regarding levies, they work for your defensive forts as well. Like I was saying earlier, you can upgrade your forts to either economical or military. With this military, you also will gain these bars that will fill up, depending on the camps that you put in that same region. So for example, I put a champion camp, a phantasm camp, 
And while this sentry camp will eventually evolve to what I tell it to, uh, we'll make it the archery camp. And you'll see here that with this fort, it is now going to be generating this levy bar here. And whenever that fills up, you'll be able to levy and share, just like you could with the economical side of it, whether it be food or whatever. Here, you'll be able to gain military unit XP and different things like that. So in this example, I'm hovering over, it looks like the champion one here, 4.1% more defense for military units, 12.5% maximum, split between you and your allies. You'll also gain some fame for this bonus. This particular axe, 4.2% more attack power for military units, split between you and your allies. That archery camp here, um, it says just percent more movement speed for military units. So by placing a defensive fort in here and then upgrading it, uh, and then putting other camps in that same region, you'll also be able to generate a levy system where you'll gain more benefits over time the longer they stay in that region. And that should just about do it. I don't want to drag this video on for too long. I will say, however, that as good as this game is, it's not without its problems. It's a bit buggy. As I mentioned earlier, when you try to load a save, it just, there's a black screen. I can hear sound, but I can't see a video. That's really bad. If you can't load a saved game and continue what you were doing, that's a problem, especially because some of these matches may take an hour or two to do, um, especially the larger maps. Another thing to mention is that when Idly and I were playing this multiplayer, soon after I was finished recording for this video, we had some sort of connection issue and she froze. And as soon as I left, the game boot up again. And there was no way to save our current progress in multiplayer so that we could pick it up again later. So it's little things like that that really irk me. And I'm sincerely hoping that Shiro Games can solve these problems, but they seem more interested right now in releasing DLC after DLC after DLC for this game, rather than fixing the numerous bugs that are in their system. So, I mean, I do recommend this DLC. I mean, I, I recommend Northgard in general. It's just, there's some eye-opening bugs that really need to be addressed, and you folks should really be aware of that. In regards to this particular DLC, I'll just have to warn you that the learning curve is fairly high. If you're not used to the lion, then you're going to be blown away by this because there's so many different things to, to think about with this new type of faction. Again, the lion and now the stoat operate and behave completely differently than the other Norse slash Viking factions. But I recommend it. It's a fairly cheap DLC and offers some great flexibility in, in comparison to the lion. But the game itself is still a bit buggy and I sincerely hope they fix that. Well, this is Vince. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all next time. Take care.